All right, we're gonna talk Doctor Who again, and big friggin' spoiler alert, if you are not caught up on the episodes of Doctor Who, if you have not seen the episode The Name of the Doctor, go away. Still there? All right. The twist at the end is what I'm gonna spend pretty much the whole time talking about. I kind of avoid fan theory, so maybe what I'm about to say has already been said, but I wanna throw it out there anyway, because if I end up being right, I'd like some record that I called it. And talking about John Hurt as the Doctor. So what does this mean? The obvious answer is that John Hurt is some is effectively the Doctor before he took on the mantle of the Doctor. That John Hurt, um, at an earlier point in the Doctor's life, did something in the wake of that action took on the name of the Doctor, basically as a promise to lead a better, stronger, more caring life. Now that's the obvious interpretation. I think it's possible that John Hurt is not a past version of the Doctor, but rather a future version. How does that work? Because if he's a future version, why is Matt Smith aware of him? He looked at John Hurt, he knew who he was. And generally, the Doctor does not immediately recognize his future incarnations, and he certainly shouldn't have the intimate knowledge that the 11th Doctor has about this John Hurt version. Let's go on back to Series 3. David Tennant, he was talking about being taken as a child to look into the untempered schism, and he said, you know, some would be inspired, some would run away, some would go mad. Martha asks him, What about you? Oh, the ones that run away, I never stopped. But what if he's running away from something specific? What if he saw his own future self do whatever it is that this character does? And so the Doctor hasn't been running from his past, but rather running from his future. And there's another thing I want to toss in that kind of backs this up, and that's the wording of one of the lines that Matt Smith has. The name you choose, it's like, it's like a promise you make. He's the one who broke the promise. Well, if this is a past version of the Doctor, he couldn't have broken the promise. You can't break a promise you haven't made yet. So if he's the future version of the Doctor, he will ultimately break the promise that the Doctor has made in taking on that name. I'm a little bit nervous that we're gonna find out exactly what it is that he did or will do. That said, I do think Stephen Moffat understands that the Doctor needs to maintain his mystery and he's already been really clever about giving answers but not really giving answers. I mean just take the name of the Doctor. He had the Doctor's name be spoken without the audience actually hearing it which is also what he did, you know, back with uh, Silence in the Library. So I think Stephen Moffat understands that while he can tease out some really great stories out of these mysteries, it's probably poisonous to give us full-on answers. Which brings me to my second bit of speculation that I want to do. It's already known that David Tennant and Billy Piper are coming back for the 50th anniversary. I'm calling it that it's not really the 10th Doctor that we're getting. We're getting who I tend to think of as Doctor 10.5, the duplicate that was created in Journey's End. Oh yes. Think about it for a minute. You've got this other version of the Doctor who you can just bring him without having to do an excessive amount of time you wind me or techno babble to get him in there and explain why the paradox isn't destroying the world. And you've got the bonus of it's already been established that this version of the Doctor ages which means they don't have to try and hide the fact that David Tennant is visibly older than he was last time he played the part. And ditto for Billy Piper. So there you go, a couple of bits of speculation. It's gonna be a long wait to November, but so worth it. So until next time, Council's adjourned.